Good evening. Olentangy Schools is looking forward to opening our 16th elementary school in August 2021. Having another great new elementary school in our district brings the need to adjust attendance boundaries to fill that school. Continued rapid growth across Olentangy has also created the need for attendance boundaries to be adjusted across several elementary buildings and middle schools. As superintendent, I am charged with two major responsibilities to assign staff and assign students to buildings. As such, the superintendent's committee has been formed, comprised of 14 community members who have spent the past three months examining our current attendance boundaries, feeder patterns, and enrollment projections. This committee also works closely with our partner, Cooperative Strategies, who provides our enrollment projections, creates planning units, and GIS mapping tools. The committee has developed several options, which will be presented to you momentarily for your feedback. This superintendent's committee will review all feedback and ultimately provide a recommendation to me to make a final decision on new attendance boundaries. My decision will be shared at the Thursday, March 25th Board of Education meeting. Overall, I anticipate a relatively small number of students to be moved during this year's redistricting efforts. And as we look ahead to the opening of middle school six and elementary 17 in the next two to three years, a need will be created to have a much more extensive redistricting plan. One of the great things about living and attending school in our district is that everyone loves the school they now attend. Our building cultures are outstanding and no one wants to leave to attend another school. This makes decisions like this incredibly difficult because I know I'm moving students and not numbers. I encourage you to look at the bigger picture of balancing enrollment, easing overcrowding and opening a new building. I know this will be hard for those impacted. I understand and empathize. However, I am confident that for anyone moving to a new school or to the new elementary school, that a great experience awaits them. Now I'd like to turn it over to Scott Leopold from Cooperative Strategies to provide an overview of the 10 options for your feedback. Please take time after viewing this presentation to complete the feedback surveys. If after viewing this presentation, you have unanswered questions, please feel free to sign up for a designated question and answer session on Saturday, February 20th. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I'm Scott Leopold with Cooperative Strategies, and I'll be providing an overview of the redistricting process and will present a series of options to collect your feedback. As a reminder, at this point, no decisions have been made, and these options are being presented to generate feedback and conversation. This graphic outlines the overall process. As you can see, we began by establishing an advisory committee, which was charged with keeping an objective view and considering the needs of all students. This committee is composed of parent volunteers and district staff members participated as a resource. The committee reviewed the redistricting guidelines for the board, the overall process, and the underlying data such as enrollment and capacity. The committee then worked to develop a series of options, which you will see in this presentation. Now we are at the point where we're ready to collect feedback. This will include both an interactive online survey as well as opportunities for virtual live Q&A sessions with the staff, consultants, and the committee members. The committee will review all feedback from the community and develop a recommendation to the superintendent. These are the redistricting guidelines that we use for this process. The resolution can be found in its entirety on the district website. The major points are that each building should be optimally utilized, once determined at and after consideration of projected enrollment, attendance boundaries should remain intact as much as possible. Safety, convenience, and efficiency of transportation as well as student travel times should be considered in assigning students to buildings. And also alignment of elementary, middle, and high school attendance areas should be a factor in establishing attendance areas as much as possible. We spent a lot of time talking about the second bullet point. Uh, this is particularly relevant because as you know, we're opening a new elementary school this fall, in the fall of 2021. But in the next two to three years, we have additional, an additional middle school and possibly an additional elementary school coming online as well. So the committee had to consider boundary change implications over time, knowing that some of them may be temporary. This slide just shows our history of facilities and when they opened up. And you can just see that, you know, as we all know, Olentangy is a fast growing district and we often opened a lot of schools uh, over the last 30 years. This slide shows us our current boundaries and associated data. The data points that we worked with quite a bit 
or capacity. And this is the number of students that a facility can hold. And we have accounted for dedicated pre-K spaces in each building and are not in including that in our capacity number. And so here you can see our capacity numbers in the chart. Our next figure that we're looking at is enrollment. This is the number of students in each building. Again, we have queried out the, the pre-K students so that we're only looking at the students that correlate to the capacity that we're looking at. These numbers are based on the 2020-21 student enrollment information. And the committee took into account fluctuations due to the pandemic as well as future growth. And so this shows us our, our, our enrollment for each school based on the current boundaries. And this does include live-in enrollment, so it does not include transfers between buildings. And finally, uh, utilization shown over here. This is simply enrollment divided by capacity, which gives us a percentage. And so you can see uh, on average, if we include the capacity from the new elementary school, uh, we're at 90% utilization. And so uh, we do show the need for that building. Uh, overall, with that new school coming online, we're at 90%. Uh, looking at the map over here, um, you can see uh, we've got some overutilization currently at Cheshire and Johnny Cake Elementary Schools, as well as Heritage and Olentangy Meadows. Uh, we've got a little bit of underutilization at Alum Creek Elementary. Uh, if we look over to the western portion of the district, you can see that we're pretty good as far as overall utilization. We see a lot of the schools in the green. Uh, if we look at middle schools, uh, we see a little overutilization at both Orange Middle School and Berkshire Middle School. Uh, Berkshire Middle School is more of a focus because there's more growth pointed at Berkshire. Uh, changes to Orange, that's something that we could perhaps revisit in a future process when we're talking about the next middle school coming online as well. Uh, when we look at the high school utilization over here, uh, just keep in mind we're using that 1800 number as the capacity um, You know, right now. Uh, we're, we're in pretty decent shape as far as utilization goes at the high school level, but we may look at balancing that utilization uh, over the next two to three years when we, again, look at, look at boundaries uh, associated with the opening of the new, middle, the new middle school six. Now, before we go into the options, I just want to reiterate the goals for this process. Uh, we're establishing a boundary for the next elementary school, which will open in the fall of 2021. Uh, we're always considering the guidelines from the board. Uh, the options that we're looking at are intended to foster conversation and discussion uh, among community members. We need to remember that we're always thinking about the future growth and its impacts on enrollment, capacity, and utilization. As you've probably noticed already, we have split the options into you know, really three different categories. Uh, we're looking at the North Elementary options, which include Cheshire, Johnny K Corners, Heritage, Arrowhead, and the new elementary school. Uh, we're treating them separate from the south options, which include Alum Creek, Freedom Trail, Glen Oak, Oak Creek, Olentangy Meadows, and Walnut Creek, uh, because they're, they're pretty much independent as far as those changes go. Any of the north options that we're showing will work with any of the south options that we're showing. And we just thought it was simpler to break those two up. Um, we're not looking at any changes to the boundaries for elementary schools uh, on the western side of the district west of Olentangy River slash 315. Um, middle school concepts are only for the northern region, uh, you know, looking at Shanahan, Hyatts, and Berkshire. Uh, we don't have any middle school changes proposed for the southern uh, region of the district. Uh, finally, I just want to reiterate one more time before we go into the options uh, that at this point, no decisions have been made. There's no priority of options. There's no preferred option. The order in which they're presented uh, does not matter. These options are, are truly intended to just foster conversation and feedback from the community. Here's our, our South option one. Uh, this shows an overview of the option uh, and the proposed boundaries associated with option one. I'll show a, a slide here in a minute that shows and highlights what those changes are. Just some of our highlights here. Uh, this option takes the Gemini Parkway corridor um, that is currently split up among a, three or four different schools and it puts it all at Alum Creek Elementary. And then Olentangy Glade would move from Olentangy Meadows to Oak Creek. It impacts about uh, a little 294 students. And then uh, our, our utilization is pretty balanced. We get Alum Creek. Uh, up to 97%. If you remember, uh, it's one of those facilities that's currently underutilized. Uh, Walnut Creek pops out here. It's at 102%, but it's at a very stable 102%. Uh, if we look at the feeder patterns, you can see them in this chart over here. And so Walnut Creek would feed to Berkshire. Uh, 
Al uh, Alum Creek would continue to feed to Shanahan. We would have a split. Some of the Alum Creek kids would go to Orange, and so that's why we show that over here. Uh, Glen Oak would continue to have a split, meaning some of the students would go to Shanahan and some of them would go to Orange. Uh, but Oak Creek, Olentangy Meadows, Freedom Trail would all feed 100% into Orange Middle School. This map shows just the detail. You can see uh, the, the current boundaries are in the background. And so you can see what those changes look like. This area, again, is, is currently split between multiple schools. Uh, this would all go to Alum Creek. And then you can see uh, the Olentangy Glade area would go from Olentangy Meadows to Oak Creek. Uh, just some of the benefits and challenges, uh, similar travel time for the majority of students moving to Alum Creek. Uh, Alum Creek is right off of Old State Road, so that commute is similar to the other elementary schools uh, that are more embedded into neighborhoods. Uh, this better balances enrollment among all buildings. It relieves Olentangy Meadows Elementary, which is currently 108%. Uh, some of the challenges, uh, we do have feeder pattern splits at Glen Oak and Alum Creek. Um, this could be addressed in the future during a middle school six redistricting process. And again, we do have Walnut Creek Elementary slightly overutilized, but it's projected to decrease over the next few years. Okay, so here's option two. This is a little different. Um, the highlights that we have here, uh, Gemini Parkway Corridor and Olentangy Glade move to Alum Creek. And so here's the Gemini Parkway area and here's uh, Olentangy Glade. Uh, what's different about this one, and we'll go over this on the next slide as well, but the, uh, the Oak Creek boundary stays relatively intact uh, as it is today, but it leaves it at that 104% utilization. We'll talk about that on the next slide as well. Uh, looking at our feeder patterns, uh, we still have splits at Alum Creek, splitting between Shanahan and Orange. So that's why it shows up over here. Same with Glen Oak. Glen Oak has a majority of students go to Shanahan. We do have a small section that would go to Orange as well. Uh, same utilization at Walnut Creek. Our Alum Creek utilization is 91%, uh, but you can see you know, how this looks and you can compare it to the other options. Now I'll go to the next slide to talk about more details. So now you can see the detailed change areas associated with option two. So again, Olentangy Glade going to Alum Creek along with uh, Gemini, the Gemini Parkway corridor. Uh, what's the differentiator in this one is that the Oak Creek boundary stays relatively the same. Uh, benefits, similar travel times, from, again, for the majority of students moving to Alum Creek. Uh, Alum Creek is right off Old State Road. The commute time is similar uh, going to elementary schools that are more tucked into those neighborhoods. Uh, again, it relieves Olentangy Meadows, which is currently at 108%. We do have those feeder pattern splits um, at Glen Oak and Alum Creek, but we could address those in future changes. Uh, Oak Creek is a little overutilized at 104%. Uh, Walnut Creek, again, is, is overutilized, but it's projected to decrease over time. So here's our south option three. Uh, our highlights here, the Gemini Parkway corridor and the majority of the Polaris area. Uh, would move to Alum Creek. Uh, areas off Liz Some of the areas off of Lazelle would remain at Olentangy Meadows, uh, but are standalone developments. Uh, it moves a total of 218 students. Uh, you can see our feeder pattern that we have over here, uh, pretty similar to what we had before uh, in options one and two. Alum Creek would have a split. Glen Oak would have a split between Orange and Shanahan. Uh, looking at our utilization, Alum Creek at 94%, Olentangy Meadows at 95%. Again, unchanged at Oak Creek at 104, uh, Walnut Creek 102%. Again, looking at our uh, changes for this area, you can see this whole area, uh, you know, with the exception of a couple of these uh, complexes over here, uh, would move to Alum Creek. Same with that Gemini Parkway corridor. Our benefits, again, similar travel, travel times for the majority of students moving to Alum Creek. Uh, Alum Creek is right off of Old State Road. Our commute time would be similar to going to those elementary schools that are more tucked into neighborhoods. Uh, it does relieve Olentangy Meadows, which is currently at 108%. Our, our challenges, again, are those feeder patterns. Uh, we've got a little overutilization at Glen Oak at 104%. Uh, Walnut Creek is overutilized, but it is projected to, de to decrease over the next few years. That concludes our, our options and concepts presentation. Now I'll go into talking about the next steps and collecting your feedback. We'll have this online survey open through Sunday, February 28th. Uh, and just as a reminder, this is really about feedback. It's not about uh, you know voting or anything like that. It's, it's really sharing your comments and feedback so that the committee can consider them as they develop a recommendation. 
we'll have a opportunity to participate in an online online Q&A sessions on Saturday, February 20th. Uh, those will be at noon, where we'll discuss the the, re the North Region Elementary options. At one o'clock, we'll discuss the South Region options. And at two, we'll look at those middle school concepts. And again, the committee will review your feedback and make a recommendation to the superintendent. There will be a video announcement on this process and the recommendations on March 26th. Uh, thank you for taking the time to go through this with us.